Okay, tips and trips while traveling. Tips, tips and, tips and trips. Okay, tips and trips, tricks, tricks while traveling uh, Thailand, Southeast Asia in general. Uh, this is my number one. Don't book ahead. I did this uh, in India, but I just booked uh, my flights ahead of time. And when I was in India, I booked through a guy who basically booked all my trains for me, which kind of made it a lot easier in some respects, but also I lost that sort of flexibility, that ability to stay in a, a place longer. Overall, I wouldn't change that experience because I met up with that guy. I basically like lived in his, in his boathouse in Kashmir for like two weeks with a great, great set of guys. But anyway, don't book ahead. All right, number two, don't book expensive tours. I mean, if this is your style, if you like sort of being shown around, uh, explain what's going on, go for it. If you've got the budget for it, go for it. Um, but overall, what I like to do is just go to the historical place and follow tours to get a little bit of historical uh, insight, kind of explore. And if it looks like it's the wrong way, it's probably the most interesting part of it. And uh, just keep on exploring until you're told differently, until you're told to get off, or until you're told to leave. Right, number three. Keep organized. It relates to what you have, physical things in your bag, who you meet, and making sure that you remember them later on. Uh, keeping track of visa dates. Cool, number four. Transportation. Some of that. <laughs> My handwriting is getting so bad, I just look back at that. Um, transportation, you can either walk when you're in a city, look, you can hitchhike, but there is a potential danger for that, but it is the most unique way of traveling around. Tourist buses, a little bit more expensive, a bit more comfort, you get power. Local buses, you talk to everyone, but yes, there's a language barrier. Yes, you might get um, crammed in with some chickens or whatever. A bike, um, which is an amazing way of traveling. There are pros and cons. The pros, you can go wherever you want. You can whip around cities when you arrive in one. You don't have to get tuk-tuks. The cons, when you arrive, there's always the danger that someone might steal your bike. If you're camping, someone might steal your bike. It's basically someone might steal your bike, take the petrol, take parts off it let down your tyres or pop your tyres, which happens a lot in big cities because locals don't like you. Um, basically those are the cons, you're not going to get the money back from your bike originally, which you spent unless you bought like a backpacker's bike, which is $200. Let me break this down for you, okay? This is the way up between buying a backpacker's bike and a new bike. Okay, I hope you like this graph. This is a graph of time, of course, down here. Time against expense or amount of money you spent. So, I'm gonna do the backpacker's bike first. You spend $200, which is here. And then over time, you're gonna spend lots and lots of money on repairs, which is just gonna go up like this. When you sell it, of $200, which is the same amount down here. So that's $200, this is $200. So you get basically, you go here. The new bike, you basically spend around sort of $600, and it would go up at a slower rate because it wouldn't crash as much. I'm banking on getting around sort of $400 back. So if that's 200, that's 400 about here. So that's about this much. This is so technical. So I'll go down to about here. The longer you have this bike, the more payback you have because this, this line isn't as steep. But it's all dependent on this resale over here. So I think that these two lines sort of cross off, right? So if I bought an old bike or a new bike, basically I'm gonna have the same expense at the end of the day. Basically what I'm saving on is time in a garage. I can just keep on driving and have this time for myself. I'm not worried about the bike breaking down. I can push it a little bit further, go out a bit further into the wilderness and still trust that this bike will get me home safe. So I went for the new bike, but you make your own judgment based on this incredible graph. Okay, I've got one final one which I definitely obsessed on uh, in India. Budgets, yes, right. Budget. Uh, I was basically writing in a book how much I spent per day. I don't recommend this at all because it's so time consuming and it just makes you more and more worried. Uh, basically, I forgot about budget because there's this fatal flaw. $10, that's my budget per day. Say one day I spend $8, it means that I know in the back of my mind I can spend $12 the next day, right? If you calculate that you spend $8 on one day, you're like, yeah, I've got two more dollars to spend the next day.
enjoy your time i've done that over the ten dollars so you can't really read it but enjoy your time while traveling if you wake up one day and you're not enjoying it just take a rest day get back in the mood and smash it out If you're not positive, people around you won't be positive. Joy brings joy, happiness brings happiness. Yeah, if you have any more questions about how I get around, what I pack, not saying that I've done it in the correct way, but I mean, it's worked for me for eight months so far. It works, I'm still learning so much more. If you, if you have any more questions, ask me and I will answer them.